All right, Isaiah chapter 45. I'm going to read three verses of Scripture as text verses, and there again we may refer to some other Scriptures along the way in the message of the hour, but I want to bring to you a thought that I've titled Anchored by the Lord. Anchored by the Lord. Uh, Look at verse 5, 6, and verse 7. Uh, The prophet is speaking and listening and hearing from God, and uh, the Lord speaks to him and says, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now the word for evil there in that text comes from a Hebrew word that means calamity. God is in control. And one of the most important things that we can allow Him to be in our lives is in control. Is in control. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the reading of your word, and I just pray now as we look at it for just a few short moments that you will take it and that you will use it, and God, that you might break the bread of life, uh, that we might be fed this evening. Use it for your glory, and may we all see Jesus and see the importance of trusting in him through this message. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, trust is one of the most important things that you and I can do whenever we begin to think about the Lord. Uh, The Lord wants us to place all of our trust in Him. And there's so many other things in the world today that can grasp our attention, get our attention. And uh, as we think about some of those things, We need to learn to move those things aside. There are those people who are are just uh, wrapped up in getting wealthy quickly. And uh, there are those who uh, worship uh, jobs instead of uh, the God who provided the job. And there are those who worship idols and everybody from time to time has got a certain idol in their lives. And so we have to be careful where we place our trust and what we place our trust in. God wants us to be anchored in Him. Now, I like what the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, where the Bible says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Now, what is he talking about when he talks about that particular hope? It's Christ that is our hope. We have Christ as an anchor of our soul. And then the writer goes on to say, both sure and steadfast. Now there's some things in this world that we think can be sure that is far from being sure. But you can be sure that Christ is steadfast. He cannot be moved. And He changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. While people will say today that times are changing, God never changes. While people today say things are changing, God's Word never changes. It's the same that it's always been, and it's the same that it always will be. Now man, as I said this morning, can do their best to take and write their own Bible and try to make this sin all right and that sin all right, but friends, it's not all right. It's not all right if it goes against what this Bible teaches uh, that we preach from. We don't need to write our own book, but we need to trust in the one uh, who had the book written. Amen? And that is the Lord of God. Uh, What do you really trust in? Who do you really trust today? How much do you really uh, stake on things uh, that cannot be trusted? Check the scriptures for yourself. And as we look at this for just a few moments, uh, I want you to see several things with me and look at it together uh, for just just a moment. 
First of all, I want you to see that you got to be careful because you can't trust man. You got to be careful because you can't trust man. Man will let you down. Did you hear me? Man will let you down. I try not to ever let anybody down, but I tell you, man is far from being perfect. There are times that that maybe my mind, because it's growing more feeble, don't remember things that it should remember. In fact, just this past week, my preacher's wife reminded me that I needed to check on a certain individual in this church. And she asked me, did you check on them? And I said, no, I didn't. And uh, so she said, well, you need to check on them. And so I did. But I had to be reminded now, I don't say that to, uh, to say this to you, but I'm not perfect, and there are times that I may let you down, but I want you to know God won't ever let you down. You can't trust man. Listen to what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, the Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Now, as we begin to think about that, and maketh up flesh his arms, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Don't ever trust a man more than you trust God, because a man will always let you down. I remember uh, being between churches one time, and I had a little church over in Barney to call me and ask me if I could come and fill the pulpit for them. And I said, sure, I'll be glad to come over and fill your pulpit. And I won't ever forget leaving my home in Tifton, Georgia and starting toward Barney, Georgia and my car broke down. Anybody ever had your car to break down? I didn't make it anyway. And so I got a phone call late that evening wanting to know why that I told them I, I would come and then I didn't show up. And I said, well, there's no way I could have got there on time because my car broke down in El Dorado and it would have took me a long time to walk from El Dorado to Barney. And so that's why I couldn't make it. But I let them people down. And uh, I, I'm one that believes with all of my heart that nothing happens without a reason. And so I just said to myself, for some reason, God didn't want me to go to Barney uh, uh, tonight. And so I didn't go. I didn't go. It was an evening service that I was supposed to preach. But I let those people down. And uh, there was one time that I had a meeting scheduled. I used to keep two calendars, one at my office at work and one at my office at home. You know what I learned? It don't pay to do that. It don't pay to keep two calendars because I booked something at the office and then I booked something at home and I had booked it on the same day. So I had to let one of those individuals down. Man will always let you down. I've never let anybody down intentionally. But I tell you, man will always let you down. But God won't ever let you down. So be careful because you can't trust man. You need to be anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, I want you to know not only can you not trust man, but you can't even trust yourself. You can't. You can't trust yourself. Now, preacher, what are you talking about? When you tell me that I can't trust myself. Well listen to what the Bible has to say about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 9. The Bible says, But he, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter, or 2 Corinthians rather, chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. Listen. Whenever we begin to think about not being able to trust in ourselves, I think of all those times that, that I, I couldn't trust in myself. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, let me tell you something. You can look at me and tell that I enjoy good food. I enjoy good food. I can't trust myself to be on no diet because it just don't work for me. It don't. I was good today. We went uh, and had a meal together, and I like fried fish. I do. Oh, yeah. 
But I didn't eat fried fish today. I ate grilled fish today. And you know what? It was pretty good. Wasn't near as good as the fried, but it was good. Wasn't near as good as the fried. Listen, I, I remember, and you've heard the story, every time I go on a diet, somebody going to bring something to this church that I like to eat. Every time. Uh, I, Nancy kind of gives me about my diet sometimes. Every time she looks at my plate, she says, Preacher, I thought you was on a diet. <laughs> and I told her, I said, Nancy, I don't eat but one meal a day. Starts at six in the morning and ends at midnight. <laughs> so we can't trust ourselves. Let me tell you something. You can't trust yourself to be able to overcome sin because the devil knows exactly what you like. In fact, he knows what it will take to get your attention. And he's going to throw that out there in front of your face. I love caramel cake. You know that. I've told you that I do. And every time I, I used to go to the restaurant in Tifton, they'd parade me by the cake. You know what I learned when I, they transferred me to Douglas? Holt's Bakery's up there over there. That's right. It is. I love donuts. I love donuts. Can't you look at me and tell? I do. And Holt's Bakery's got some good ones. You hear me? They got some good ones. And I used to have to go by there every morning on my way to my office over in Douglas when I worked over there. Now, I ought to be ashamed for saying this because my wife don't know this. So, I, <laughs> there's been many times in the morning that I stopped at Hope Bakery and bought me three donuts. Three. I was good. I just eat three. I could eat six. But I had three, three. But you see, hey, that's, that's my weakness. Somebody else may have some other type of weakness. And we just can't trust ourselves. We can't. We can't trust ourselves. So, so we've got to be anchored in the Lord. And it's that anchoring in the Lord that can help us get past ourselves. We need to be anchored in the Lord. Because the anchor of the Lord will hold. I will tell you this. I had a doctor's appointment this past week. I love my doctor. I got a good doctor. I really do. I tell you, there was one time that I didn't have a good doctor. Well, I guess she was good. It was a lady doctor that I was going to see. And every time I'd go see her, all she'd talk about is you need to lose some weight. And so, I mean, she could have drunk a strawberry cola and looked like a thermometer. That's how skinny she was. But now listen to me. She'd tell me, you need to lose some weight. So I made up my mind one day. I said, I'm going to stop this. I went in there and before she even opened her mouth, I said, I want me a new doctor. I want a new doctor. She said, well, what have I done to you? I said, not one thing. I love you. But I want me a new doctor. She said, why do you want a new doctor? I said, I want me a fat doctor. I want a fat doctor. And the Lord blessed me and gave me one. Amen. I tell you what, he did. I got My doctor's about as, about as big as I am. And I walked in there the last time, the time before this past week, and he looked at me after I got off the scale, and he said, son, what you been doing? What you been eating? You've gained 12 pounds. I said, I don't like you no more. He said, why? I said, because you told me I've gained so much weight. And I said, the only reason I wanted to change to you is because you're as big as I was. I went back this past week and I'd lost five pounds. Five. He said, well, preacher, I see you're headed back in the right direction. I said, it ain't because I wanted to be, bless God. But hey, we can't trust ourselves. Satan's going to parade in front of you what it will take to get your attention, to draw you away from that anchor. we got to be anchored in the Lord. Thirdly, 
You can't trust your own heart. You can't trust your own heart. Now, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, if you begin to lean on your way of thinking and, and the way that you would do things, listen, Proverbs 28, 26 says this, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Your mind and your heart will lead you astray. It will cause you to follow everything except what you need to follow. You need to be anchored in the Lord. The Lord is an anchor that will hold and, and He is an anchor that will help you as you walk in this life. You need to be anchored in the Lord. You can't trust your own heart. And then fourthly, listen to this. This is important. You can't Trust riches. Amen. You can't trust riches. Now don't misunderstand me. Isn't it good to have a dollar in your pocket? Yes. I don't know of anybody that don't want to have a dollar in their pocket or a dollar in their bank account. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're relying upon your riches to carry you through life, those things can be taken away overnight I think about what Paul said in his writings he said I know what it is to have and he did I know what it is to have but I know what it is to have not too let me tell you something I know what it is to have I really do the Lord blessed me beyond measure I, I've, I've had I've had a good life I really have I owned a business one time in Tifton that was was bringing me in a whole lot more money that I was making on the job that I was working with the, with the school system in Tiff County. And I lost it all overnight, every bit of it. The business, my home, cars, possessions. Lost it all, every bit of it. Well, preacher, how'd you survive? I didn't lose Jesus. Amen. I didn't lose Jesus because Jesus was the anchor of my soul. I didn't lose Jesus. I held on to Jesus. I wondered sometimes how in the world I would survive. But you know how I made it? I was anchored in Jesus. And I made up my mind. I said, though I've lost everything I've ever worked for, I hadn't lost Jesus. I got the Lord. God is such an amazing God. A little church with 17 members in Arabic, Georgia, called me to be their preacher when I was going through one of the darkest times in my life. That little church, God, God sent that people, those 17 people, to reach into my life. Now listen to me. Those 17 people blessed me with a good salary to live on, gave me a house to live in, and I won't ever forget when they gave me the house to live in, I told them, I said, well, you know, it's nice that y'all are going to furnish me a house. I said, but I don't have any furniture. Within one week after their call to me, I had a house full of furniture because word got out what had happened to Brother Danny and God went to work through his people. I didn't have a living room seat. God gave me one. Didn't cost me a dime. I didn't have a dining room seat. God gave me one. Didn't cost me a dime. I didn't have money to get a house started again. God laid it on one of the churches that I pastored years ago. One of their deacons knocked on my door at my mama's house. That's where I was living. And said, Brother Danny, the Lord laid it on our church's heart to help you get started again. Says, here's your check for $1,000 to get started. Let me tell you something. God restored back to me everything and more than I ever lost because I looked to him because he was the anchor of my soul. 
He was the anchor of my soul. I thought the Georgia Baptist Convention would write me off, and they sent a man down who sat with me a whole day. And I cried in front of his face when he met with me. They called him the crisis minister. Boy, I've been through a crisis. And he sat down with me for a solid day and cried with me and prayed with me. And I won't ever forget looking into the face of Dr. Robert Anderson and saying, Dr. Anderson, my ministry's over. And he said, praise God, boy. Now that yours is over, God's can begin. God's can begin. And to tell you what God has done with me the last 15 years of my life is amazing. Why? Why did God do that for me? Because I realized that Jesus was the anchor of my soul. If I'd had to preach to birds and squirrels, I'd have preached to birds and squirrels. Because I love Jesus that much. God was so good. I won't ever forget when I took my youngest son home in Araby, Georgia. I won't ever forget that first night when we walked into that home together, me and my young son. He stopped and he looked around that house and he said, Daddy, he said, we got better stuff than we had when we was living at home. <laughs> I said, that's God, son. That's God. You can't trust anything but God. You've got to let him be the anchor of your soul. Fifthly, you can't trust in hiding your sin. You know, it's a sad day that everybody that we're living in because everybody tries to hide their sins. And you've heard me say it and I'll say it again. You can hide your sin from your preacher. And your preacher can try to hide his sin from you. You can hide your sin from your Sunday school teacher. You can hide your sin from your deacon. You can hide your sin from the church. But you can't hide your sin from God. Because God is high and lifted up. Anybody ever been to the mountains and looked down into a valley? Beautiful, isn't it? Can you imagine how God is high and lifted up looking down and seeing everything that you do? You can't hide your sins from God. You can't do it. Listen. Isaiah 47. Look at verse 10 and 11. The Bible says, Therefore thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Does that sound familiar to you? Man, it ought to because that's where we are today. It would appear in our country today that people are trusting in their wickedness more than anything else. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, and thou shalt know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to pull it off. What does that scripture say? Whenever we turn to our sin and live to sin, God says, okay, just go ahead and sin. Go ahead and it'll overthrow you and it'll overcome you. And you'll not even know where it's coming from. And that's where we are today Amen. in our country. God, we need a Holy Ghost sent revival in our, in our country today. We've seen sparks of it. But until God's people wake up, get themselves where they need to be, we'll never have it. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, God says, then will I hear from heaven. We'll forgive their sins and we'll heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. 
You can't trust in hiding your sin from God because God sees it all. And then last of all, listen. He and he alone is your salvation. The Lord Jesus alone is your salvation. Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I will trust and not be afraid. Listen, God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, is your salvation. He and He alone is the anchor of your soul. You can't depend upon anything else to hold, but the anchor of Christ will hold in your life. That old song that somebody made very popular, The Anchor Holds. Anybody ever heard it? The anchor holds. The anchor of God holds and always will hold. But all of these other things that we place our trust in will let us down let us down and cause us to be in a bad way. My soul is anchored in the Lord and I am grateful. And you know, I think about what Job said when his wife said to him, why don't you just curse God and die? And <laughs> Job basically said to her, you're speaking as a foolish woman. I know my Redeemer liveth. I'm glad that I'm anchored. And I know that my Redeemer liveth. And because He lives, Jesus said, I too shall live. Amen. Render these old bodies we live in, they're getting mighty old. We can't move around like we used to. I used to get a swing going. Now somebody has to push me. Can't do what I used to do. I was out shoveling some dirt here the other day. They paved the road in front of our house. And I love our county. They just slung all of that old dirt off the side of the road where they could pave it right in my yard. And I took a shovel and I moved all that dirt. They come back next week and done it again. I'm going to say what I'm going to say what Junior Hill would say. That might not make the preacher cuss, but it sure made me want to write my name down or write it down and sign my name to it. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do it. I just got my shovel and went out there and started shoveling again. Took me three days to shovel all that dirt. Three days, honey, or three weeks? I can't remember. But let me tell you something. Listen, I'd come in like this. Just, 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 just couldn't hardly go. And I'd look at my wife and i said, honey, I just can't do what I used to do. I can remember a time when I could have just shoveled that dirt all day. But you know, God let me see somebody that couldn't shovel it at all. It reminded me, son, be thankful that at least you can shovel a little bit and rest and go back and then shovel some more. And rest and then go back and shovel some more. The anchor holds. The anchor holds. And I'm thankful that if I continue to hold on and to trust the anchor, Christ, that one day, <laughs> one day soon, I'm going to be in a land where I'll be able to shovel dirt all day again. But I don't believe there's going to be no dirt that's going to need to be shoveled there. Do you? Amen. Boy, it's going to be nice just to sit around the table with the Lord. I used to listen to an old preacher by the name of Oliver Green. 
And Oliver Green says, you know, when I get to heaven, he said, I'm going to corner me up some angels and go over there and preach to them. I said, said to myself, I said, that's probably be something like I'd like to do. But won't need to be no preaching in that fair city. I imagine the Lord will set all us preacher boys down, set us down, tell us all those mistakes that we made trying to lead others to Christ. But oh, what a day that's going to be. Hold on! To an anchor that holds. Because one day soon, all of this is going to be over. And we'll be with the Lord. And what a day that's going to be. Don't trust in things that will let you down. But trust in the one who will never, ever let you down. And by the way, his name is Jesus. Stand with me if you will. Father, we thank you so much for the word. And we praise you, dear Lord, for what you've done. We ask God that you have your way now as we have a time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.